welcome to a game for your thoughts. Today we're talking about The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. So The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is actually the fourth Zelda game following Link's Awakening. And it follows Zelda and Link as... Oh, sorry, we gotta wait for King Zora to move. Okay, now that's over, we can continue. So Zelda Ocarina of Time was released back in 1998 for the Nintendo 64 and was a huge success. It was the first 3D Zelda game and one of the biggest releases for the Nintendo 64 at the time. So the story for Ocarina of Time follows a boy from the Kokiri Forest named... Slur... S -s Slurm... Slurp... Slurp... <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Whoever you want to name him, really, he can be... <laughs> you can be so many different things, but I named him Link for simplicity's sake, and we'll call him Link for this thing. But anyways, so Link is a boy in the Kokiri Forest, and he gets chosen by the Deku Tree to have a fairy named Navi, and Link has a destiny to go and save Hyrule, so he has to figure out what that is. So he goes and saves the Deku Tree from an evil spirit, and then the Deku Tree instructs him to go visit Zelda at Hyrule Castle, so you have to travel all the way across Hyrule Field to the Hyrule Castle where you meet Zelda, and Zelda's like, hey, I have this weird dream about this guy and it doesn't look so good so we're gonna have to stop this guy and it leads on to this epic quest of epicness to save the future Hyrule and just the world itself from the evil Ganondorf at this point this sounds like a kind of traditional Zelda story like this seems kind of normal but for the time this was new this was different storytelling like this hadn't really been present in a Zelda game the first few Zelda games were very basic in their storytelling and Link's uh, Ocarina of Time it just really takes it to the next level here it just has this very grand and epic story that has a very good beginning middle and end a Link to the Past definitely started this and gave a good solid foundation for Ocarina of Time to work off of, and I thought Ocarina of Time did a fantastic job. But here, there's always things happening. There's cool and new interesting characters. There's very interesting and specific events that happen that are actually pretty memorable. There are lots of really cool moments that happen, and you just come across a lot of really cool and interesting things across your journey. Cool side quests and main characters you come across, fun and interesting weird things just happening on the side that lead to some cool and fun world building, and it's fantastically done, and it's just really enjoyable the entire time through. A Link to the Past did a lot for Zelda games in terms of storytelling. The first two Zelda games are very basic, where A Link to the Past added a little bit more, but Ocarina of Time definitely takes what A Link to the Past did with the storytelling and the lore and just takes it to the next level. It adds more in the sort of in the world building, the storytelling, just the overall lore. It's just far more interesting and very well done for what we had seen. The storytelling here is just fantastic and it's a really great fantasy adventure that you go on. I love it all. It's just so much fun. Just Like I said, the characters you come across and the events and it uses the time travel plot device really well. There's definitely a few moments where this is used spectacularly. I don't really want to spoil any, but also at the same time, this game's like 20 something years old. So it's like, if you don't already know, then you you're not gonna know but also I don't know there's like a cool thing with like a windmill and this guy's super frustrated because it's always like it's spinning too fast and he's like girl this boy came here seven years ago and ruined the windmill and he's like here's the song you play and he teaches you the song then you go back in time and then you show up and you play the song and it starts the windmill up and it creates this cool kind of time loop thing it's things like that that are really interesting that I kind of actually wish there was more of but when they are used it's super cool super fun and super interesting in the end the story of this adventure is just really well done I really liked my time with the story of Ocarina of time as it's just so much fun i really did enjoy this just really grand adventure and by the end you do feel like you went on this really fantastical journey it does have a really good solid like wow remember all, all this awesome stuff you did it's just really cool and just has this great conclusion that's kind of bittersweet and just leads to some more fun and it's just complemented very well by everything else this game does so the gameplay is where things get really interesting this is <laughs> this is going to be fun so ocarina of time is one of those games that's hailed as one of the greatest of all time it's always put on best ever lists and it just always finds its way at the top of people's favorite games of all time and actually the gameplay is where I have a lot of complaints about Ocarina of Time. When looking at Ocarina of Time for what it is it set the future for what every Zelda game after it will be. If you look Zelda Ocarina of Time is where everything just splits and heads into everything we know Zelda as. Uh, Ocarina of Time is just something that's not really seen too often. Something that people call a revolutionary title and what I'm going to call an important game. It definitely did change the Zelda series going forward in almost every single way in the way it presented its stories, its gameplay, and just its overall 
way it's done. I mean, this is one of the first 3D games of its type, and it just really set the standard for everything going forward. And there's still games today that are being affected by what Ocarina of Time did almost 25 years ago. There are certainly games like Rocket League and Bloodborne that use the Z-targeting system that Ocarina of Time really started and popularized and did pretty well. But definitely, it's not the perfect use of this. Some people like to think that Ocarina of Time is this masterpiece that has no problems at all, but it certainly does have problems. Looking at its impact in gaming as a whole is very easy to see. It's so easy to see just elements from Ocarina of Time peppered throughout games all over the place. It's really great to see, and I really do appreciate it for that. But when you're looking at Ocar Ocarina of Time now as a critical, like, a critical look and being like, okay, what's up with this game? It's easy to see that there is far more flaws here than people tend to think there are. And the trickiest thing is Ocarina of Time is kind of a problem of itself. Being the first of its kind is super difficult to do because it's the first of its kind. You have no really other experiences to draw from or things to learn from and be like, oh wow, that game did not do that very well. Let's not do that. Ocarina of Time really didn't have that because this is the first of its kind. It really is one of the first 3D adventure games that uses Z-targeting and just the way that it's all presented. It's really one of the first of its kind, so it's hard to learn from other experiences. So other games learn from Ocarina of Time, and that's why I think it earns the title of an important game and not the best game of all time, because the best game of all time implies that it's perfect in every way, shape, and form and still holds up like that today, where I think that's very not true. I think it's an important game because it takes everything that it did and other games learn from it in a positive way. Not to ruin Ocarina of Time by saying like that game is terrible because it didn't do this right the first try. I don't feel like that's very fair. I feel like it's more say more fair to say that other games learn from Ocarina of Time to make future games better, which makes Ocarina of Time important. And when I say that, it's definitely not a bad thing, not at all. I mean, there's certainly elements of Ocarina of Time that didn't work well. Like I said, the Z-targeting system is very influential, um, used all over the place. Like I said, Rocket League to Bloodborne, they're two very different games, but they use a similar system that Ocarina of Time really popularized. And when you play Ocarina of Time, it's really frustrating to use, honestly, because a lot of the enemies jump and move around, the camera swings around in disorienting ways, and it just isn't a very fluid system. It doesn't move very well. And sometimes the camera adjusts in very weird angles, specifically the Forest Temple with Ganon, the Phantom Ganon fight. It like changes the angle so it's like kind of on like a downward facing up angle. And it's just not the most easy thing to see, especially when a lot of that fight is based off of perception as he throws an orb at you and you have to hit it back. And it's really hard to see where it is when it's like at a, like a downward facing angle and it's just kind of weird. And with that being said, future Zelda games did it better. I love this part in Wind Waker when you're fighting the Phantom Ganon in Wind Waker. He throws the orbs at you and you hit them back. It's just easier to see what's going on as it's just presented in a better way. So looking at Ocarina of Time singularly is almost nearly impossible because you look at Ocarina of Time and you're like, well, every Zelda game after it did everything Ocarina of Time did, but it did it better. There's other games that are similar to Ocarina of Time, but they did it better because they learned from Ocarina of Time. And so it's just so tricky to very analyze this game specifically. And I had such a hard time when I was putting this review together because I was like, okay, this needs to be very contained and specific review. And I'm like, I can't do that. It's almost impossible. So I didn't. I'm using Ocarina of Time to a bounce point to a grander idea. And it's tricky because this may seem like it's coming off negative, which I hope it's not because I really do think that this is a positive conversation to have because everybody, like I said, it's always hailed as this masterpiece, this perfect game that just has no flaws whatsoever, but it absolutely does have flaws. Like I said, that Z-targeting system is not always the smoothest. It doesn't function very well. I didn't really like a lot of the puzzles presented in Ocarina of Time, and I felt like A Link to the Past and other Zelda games did them better in just the way that they are presented. Yet again, that presentation of the 3D world translating from 2D to 3D, there's only so much you can do with a 3D space compared to a 2D, but there's also more you can do with a 3D space compared to 2D, and we see that in future Zelda games. Future Zelda games used full advantage in this 3D space where Ocarina of Time was just testing the waters. That's why a lot of the puzzles in Ocarina of Time are you just walking around a room, there's an arrow, pop, and you just shoot it, and then you move on. It's just not very grand or very intricate puzzle systems. It's very simplistic and basic, which is fine for what it is, but it definitely is used better in future titles. I keep saying all this stuff and it keeps bringing back to my main point. Ocarina of Time is not a masterpiece. It is not a perfect game. It is an important game. And I think that is what the main thing about all of this is, is that Ocarina of Time is an important game. And I think it's to start being recognized more so as an important game instead of a masterpiece, greatest of all time, legendary game. And I think that's a very different 
conversation that I could talk about later in terms of what the greatest game of all time is defined as and that it's more of a it's a whole different conversation but talking about Ocarina of Time specifically I definitely think it's time for that game to step down from that podium of being the greatest game of all time and be start being looked at it in a different way in a little bit more of a critical and uh, educational way. And that's honestly like what I'm here to do. I'm here to look at games in a more critical way than just like, oh, that was fun. No, I'm here to look at it and be like, okay, what did it do right? What did it do not so right? The story was fantastic and great. The score is amazing and arguably, arguably one of the greatest music scores in video games. It takes a lot of what from Ocarina of Time and it just improves upon it in a fantastical way and builds the world in such cool ways with interesting tones. Each of the dungeon themes sets the tone for the dungeon very, very well. You definitely think the forest temple and the fire temple themes they just set the tone so well it's just very well done in terms of its score and its presentation in the story but the gameplay has so many problems that at the time seemed cool new and revolutionary but as time has gone on this has aged very poorly it really has and it's hard to say because i know people are gonna be like how dare you say that and it's like it's true though it is it really is you look at it and a lot of this stuff has been done better going forward because this just didn't age well because it was the first of its kind i mean all these points just keep coming back to the same thing i keep saying all this stuff but it leads back to this main point that this game has problems and that's okay there's nothing wrong with having problems because you made future things better from these problems you look at the first airplane it didn't really i mean it worked but it didn't really work because now airplanes now are much better they're fancier they're nicer they look better they fly better and it's just like well it's because we learn from the past and we're improving for the future so i wouldn't look back at that first airplane and be like that airplane is a perfect masterpiece no, it literally like fell apart and <laughs> sucked. But these new fancy airplanes are great and fantastic. Zelda games are just like that. The older ones have problems and they're cool and interesting and they set the standard for what everything else would learn and improve upon. I definitely can't tell you how many times I was playing through this game and I got to a specific part and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about this part and I would sigh in despair and be like, Ugh. Here we are, the water temple again, and it's just there are sections of this game that it's just like, when I hear people say, this is the greatest game of all time, I was like, when I see the greatest game of all time, I would think it would be a very awesome and solid experience the entire time through, instead of, oh, I don't like the water temple, oh, I really didn't like the part with the Gerudo stealth section, that was really lame, oh, I really didn't like that one boss fight, that wasn't super fun, oh man, walking across Hyrule Field over and over is such a bore, it's like, well, that's a reason why the future Zelda games are don't have those problems. There's really not a whole lot of Zelda games. Like, I think of Wind Waker as my favorite Zelda game, and I don't think, oh, I really love Wind Waker, except for I really didn't like all that, I didn't like that, and I didn't like... It's just like, it doesn't really make sense to me, and I definitely think that's a good point to make, is if like, okay, if it's such a greatest game of all time, why is there all these sections that are so disliked? It just doesn't makes sense to me. I definitely feel like it's too late to say this, but I do feel like this review is becoming me just saying the same thing over and over, coming back to the main point, but I do feel like it's an important thing to say that Ocarina of Time does have problems, and it should not be hailed as the greatest game of all time. The greatest game of all time is something that should fluctuate and change, and if Ocarina of Time is not fluctuating and changing with that, that just doesn't feel fair, and it just doesn't feel consistent, and it doesn't feel educational. I definitely think that there is so much to learn from Ocarina of Time, and I think that's fantastic. But I definitely think I'm saying to you, step down from that pedestal. Don't say it's the greatest game of all time. Start saying it's the most important game of all time. The term greatest game of all time gets thrown around too much, and especially with Ocarina of Time being involved. It just is too much, and I think it's time for that to stop. I think it's time for us to learn from it, and move on, and pass that torch on to other games. Be like, wow, this game is the greatest game of all time because Ocarina of Time did this first, and it learned from that. And I don't think that instantly makes it, oh, well, this game's not the greatest game of all time. Ocarina of Time is because this game exists because of this, and it just doesn't feel doesn't feel right. So with all this being said, I hope you understand where I'm coming from, and I'm sorry if I said a lot of very mean things about your favorite game of all time, but hopefully you're able to open up your mind a little bit and see what I'm trying to say here, because I feel like it's an important point that does need to be made. And there's certainly other people out there who have made the same point. I know this isn't a new revolutionary thing that nobody's ever said before, but I think it's an important thing that I feel like I need to say to you, my audience, because maybe you've never heard that before. Maybe you're like, oh, interesting. This guy does make a good point. And you're like, wow, screw that guy. He doesn't like my game. It's like, all right. Fair enough. But if you do want to hear more of this topic, I'd actually direct you to go check out a video called Sequelitis by Ego Raptor. I think it's a really good video that kind of takes a little bit of what I said and just in a different way. He approaches it in a different way. And that's kind of weird to say because he made that video a while ago and I'm making this video now. But I do think it's a good video that I definitely think you should check out if you kind of want to see a little bit more of this topic and 
explored in a different way and with a different point too. He does definitely make a different point, which I do appreciate. So go and check it out. But in the end, I will definitely say Ocarina of Time is a game that I respect. I respect it a lot because it has a great story and a great score, and the gameplay does have problems, but it did change a lot going forward, and I respect it for that. So should you play Ocarina of Time? Sure. If you've never played it, give it a try. If you've played it before, play it again. If you like this game, awesome. If you don't like this game, that's also cool too. Nothing wrong with that. So let me know what you think about Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time down in the comments below. And if you want to see more of me and you want to hit like, subscribe, and the bell to get notified every time I post a new video, that would be awesome. And if you want to see more of me, I'm over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Game for Your Thoughts. I'm streaming there all the time. I would love to see you there. Thanks again for watching the video. I hope you have an awesome day. And don't forget that the key to success is succeeding. And we'll see you guys next time on a game for your thoughts.